why aren't they revealing it and working on saving the planet now? Well, the answer, I think you probably know, is because there are a lot of people with trillions of dollars invested in oil fields that don't really want this information out for quite a long while until the oil fields are depleted and they've got their money out three or four times over. Now that's maybe speculation, but you don't have to be a, you know, a wizard to know what would happen if the information came out and we had to adapt. We could adapt, but it would cause a very great disruption. And a lot of people would lose a lot of money. And I know a lot of people that don't like losing a lot of money, especially if they've got a lot of power and can avoid it. So this is, I think, the second major issue. Well, and the third one, which I think is equally important, is that as Minister of National Defense, I sort of understand to a certain extent the military mind. Most of them are wonderful people, and I say that without any reservation. And Canadian soldiers, sailors, and airmen are as good as they are in the world, and we can be very proud of them. And they do a fantastic job, even though we don't support them properly, with the personnel and the equipment that they deserve. But there are some people in this clique which involves some military people, but not all. Because as Dr. Beer will tell you later, and I hope you'll ask him this question, he has talked to senior people in the United States military that haven't a clue what's going on. Even though you would say, you're kidding. And he will say, no, I'm not kidding. People who should have known what was going on, not told, and told they had no right to know. Why? I think because as General Eisenhower probably saw ahead there are people who have a vested interest in the arms industry and want to keep building and building, and if they don't have an enemy, they create another one. So first you have the Cold War, and then you have a phony war against terrorism, and then when that runs out, you're going to be faced with this extraterrestrial threat, and we, the people of the world, are going to have to get together and squander all of our money to build defenses to try and protect ourselves against the ETs. Even though they've probably been here for 2,000 years and haven't done us any great harm in all that time. Well, this is tremendously important. And, you know, in Colonel Corso's book, he talks about Star Wars years ago. What was the purpose? Primarily to prepare a defense against the ETs. And what is a lot of the, the reverse engineering and new engi engineering of some of these sophisticated weapon systems being about? To prepare weapons to shoot them down. And if we start shooting them down, when they're probably still decades or centuries ahead of us in technology, that they're going to like it. <laughs> and if they don't like it, um, what are they going to do about it? And I don't want to know the answer to that question. Because I don't want us to take them on for size. I want, as a lot of members of the Exit Politics Institute want, is to try and make contact and say, what can we learn from you that will help us save our planet, save our civilization, reduce some of the disparity between the wealthiest people of the world and the poorest, and give us a more abundant life for everyone here? Because that is possible. <laughs> so we're not talking about small states here. We're not talking, you know, about some politician that was caught to spending the weekends with the blonde that wasn't his wife, or some major story that we get all the news in, news papers and get two or three pages and follow up stories. Some people think those are the important stories. Uh, I haven't been involved in one so far. <laughs> there may be interesting, you know, a little titillation, that kind of thing. But in the long run, they don't matter who. 
But who's running the world matters. Whether we save the world or not matters. And whether we get into an intergalactic war matters. Because all of us are inevitably going to be affected directly or indirectly in some way that we would really want, not want to see. So that's basically the reason I'm here. Uh, Dr. Greer is the expert. I'll leave the technical questions to him because I've never talked to anyone who has known as much about all of these things as he does. He uh, blew my mind for two and a half hours today. And uh, I, I know that he won't talk about all the things that, because he won't have time. But I think he will answer your questions about anything you want to know about the U.S. military, who knows what they know, why the right people don't know, and why we're not getting the information that we deserve to have. So uh, I just hope you'll give him a very warm reception, and I just say thank God for Dr. Greer and people like him, but especially Dr. Greer for his disclosure project. If you get one of his, uh, his uh, DVDs and watch it through about twice, you'll want to go out and uh, march on, uh, on Parliament Hill and say, look, start an inquiry, find out what this is all about. Lots of witnesses that he could bring up that would talk uh, openly about the, uh, the problems and uh, get it all out in the open before it's too late, because that's what we really want. That's what it's all about. Thank you. I say more. Um, okay, what I'm going to do now is just ask a, a Canadian representative from the Disclosure Project, uh, David Shishchuk, to come forward to introduce uh, Dr. Greer. Thanks, Victor. Uh, my name is David Shishchuk, and uh, I've been involved with the Disclosure Project in a pretty small way uh, in Toronto for the last four years. And uh, just, I'll go back into my background a little bit more later, but as we've seen tonight, it's really about questions. That's where I start coming from. And questions have sort of hanging over the world for at least the last 60 years, probably much longer than that, but certainly that long. And just to go over those questions, it's three of them, and again, we have, why are we still using obsolete and polluting energy generation and transportation technology when effective alternatives are known and have been demonstrated. Why is that the case? Why and how does a small group of people control and manipulate the economy, energy, politics, technological development, medicine, and media, and a whole lot of other fields? Why is this going on continuously? And why are we putting up with it? And why is the enormous evidence for extraterrestrial civilizations, why is it being held, held secret or outright denied? And there's one other question. Why is it when you ask these questions too often or too loudly, things start happening to you? You can be ridiculed, shunned, harassed, offered bribes, co-opted, threatened, and have a tense on your life and those people close to you. Stephen Greer has looked all of that in the face for years, and he is not doing it. He put a highly successful and honored career on hold to do this. That career was as an emergency physician and chairman of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Caldwell Memorial Hospital in North Carolina. He's also a lifetime member of Alpha Omega Alpha, which is the most prestigious, prestigious medical honor society in the United States. Now, he walked away from that to essentially take on the volunteer positions as head of the Disclosure Project, Space Energy Access Systems Incorporated, and CSIP. And thrown in on the deal, he get to watch his back pretty much on an ongoing basis. Now, how many of us sitting in this room would pick up a cause like that and pay such a price? Not many, if any of us. Now, some of the things Stephen will say 
And some of the evidence he presents will seem to be pretty much out there. And I wouldn't blame anyone for being skeptical. My own background is in research methods in 